Welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. Oker Tov, good morning. So Ryan Tovim, good afternoon. For today, uh, it'll be helpful if you have a strap for the beginning of our practice. I highly, highly, highly recommend two blocks or thick hardcover books. They will be a recurring theme throughout our practice today. And if you want to throw in a pillow at any point in the practice and specifically at the end, that will provide for a really delicious and relaxing restorative end to the practice. Um, it's really great to be here. We're going to be a more intimate group because people scattered across time zones, some of them are uh, only an hour or two away from beginning their Passover ritual. Um, and that is going to be the theme of our practice today. We are pressing pause on the exploration we've been doing around the Jewish tradition of Musar. The soul traits will be waiting for us next week when we get back to that. And instead, we're going to look at the themes of Passover and how they pop up on our mat and on our yoga practice. And to center ourselves, um, I want to look at the word for narrow. The word for narrow in Hebrew is tsar. And tsar is a root that appears in the word mitzrayim, which is the Hebrew word for Egypt. And it's a way to recall that for those of us who associate as being Jewish and with the narrative of Passover, that our time spent in Egypt was a time of narrowness, of confinement, of restriction. And the exodus out of that space into a journey of freedom was a release. So our theme today is going to be that release, that exodus from a narrow space, a place of restriction and into expansion. Um, and you will notice that this yoga practice is going to be different than our other yoga practices of the year. So for those of you who do affiliate or associate with being Jewish, I have planted, for lack of a better term, a number of Easter eggs throughout our practice. Um, I will make either extremely subtle, sometimes maybe not so subtle references to them, but sprinkled throughout the, the practice are, are many, many references to Passover, to the Seder, to the rituals, and uh, I want to encourage you to try to identify them. And after the practice, I'll open it up for people who want to guess what pose was aligned with what element of Passover or what thing that I, a piece of wisdom that I brought into the practice connects to an element of the ritual. All that being said, again, framing question, why is this yoga practice different from all other practices? I want to offer one answer immediately, which is going to be my urging you to recline throughout the practice. And one of the ways that we recline as yogis is to make good use of our props, the blocks and the strap. And that's why I'm going to be emphasizing the integration of these props so that we can recline in our poses and make them more accessible. That's part of our freedom today. Let's get started. Please lie down on your back, knees bent, feet firmly planted on the ground. Take one block or hardcover book in each hand. Walk your feet in a few inches so that if you were to reach your arms to your heels, your middle finger, your longest finger in most of our hands should graze the back of your heel. That's how you know that your feet are in close enough. Back flat on the ground. And then let your knees fall over to opposite sides of the room and press the soles of your feet together and place your blocks or hardcover books underneath your knees. Let your knees rest on the blocks. And this is a way to come into Supta Baddha Konasana, a reclined bound eagle pose. 
with a little bit of restoration. So rather than letting your knees dangle or feel the pressure to go down all the way towards the ground, let's give them a little bit of a lift. We're still opening up the hips in this pose. You should still feel the release, the expansion of your body in that way, but with a little bit of a cushion. Place one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest, and inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Take a few more cycles of breath using this opening pose to not only let your body settle in, but using the breath as a way to let your mind settle, to reduce the volume of the chatter that distracts you. And one of the ways that we use this opening pose is as a tradition, a transition, excuse me, to create a little bit of holy space, a little bit of kadesh, holiness, kadosh, in the rhythm of our regular routine. Take a few more cycles of breath. And now bring your knees up, pointing towards the ceiling. You can remove the blocks, push them a bit off to the side, grab onto your strap, and actually, I'm going to change that. Take your blocks and place them, or books, and place them next to your hips. On the lowest level. And now take your strap or rope and loop it around the ball of your right foot. Extend your right leg up towards the ceiling. Really work it towards straight. Keep your shoulder blades melted on the mat. And then start to walk your hands up the strap towards your feet. And if you want to deepen the stretch, you can lengthen your left leg out towards the front of the room. Feel as if you're pressing your left foot onto the wall in front of you. We're in Supta Padam Gustasana. Take both ends of the strap in your right hand and open up your right leg and right hip towards the right side of the room. 
and you're using your block hugging next to your right hip as that cushion. So why is this yoga practice different from the other yoga practices that we enjoy together during the year? Here we are in that same Supta Bhadam Gustasana, but a reclined version with that block hugging into your hip. Feel that right hip opening. Take another inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And as you exhale, start to raise your right leg back up towards the ceiling. Take your left hand on the left side of your strap or rope. And then start to, if your left leg is extended straight, bend your left knee, plant your left foot on the ground, and then everyone bend your right knee, release the strap or rope from the ball of your right foot, plant your right foot on the ground, and just pause for a moment. And let's take our second side. So loop the strap or rope around the ball of your left foot, and if you're not practicing with a strap or rope, that's totally cool. You can still extend your left leg towards straight and just interlace your fingers around the back of your left thigh and draw your left thigh in towards your chest. Walk, if you're practicing with the strap or rope, walk your hands up the strap or rope. And to deepen the stretch, extend your right leg out towards the front of the room. Rotate the inner part of your right thigh down towards the ground. That'll help you to straighten your right leg. And now take both ends of the strap in your left hand. And with your block or book hugged next to your left hip, start to extend your left leg towards the left side of the room. You can bend your left elbow and lower your left upper arm down towards the ground. And here again, that block is allowing you to recline in your Supta Parangustasana. Take one more inhale and exhale. Inhale, reach your left leg up towards the ceiling. If your right leg is extended straight, bend your right knee, plant your right foot on the ground, and then bend your left knee, remove the strap from your left foot, left foot on the ground. And now draw your right knee into your chest, lengthen your left leg out towards the front of the room, come onto your left heel. And now cradle your right shin between your hands, lift your head up off the ground. So your right knee is coming into the nest of your right elbow, your inner right elbow. Your right foot is pressed into the inner part of your left elbow. And for some of you, this pose might look familiar. If you're familiar with our pigeon pose, a little bit of foreshadowing, this is essentially a pigeon pose, but on your back.
Take one more cycle of breath. And then release your right shin, lower your head down. Right leg extends out towards the front of the room. Draw your left knee into your chest. Lift your head up, forehead comes towards your left knee. And then rotate your left shin about 90 degrees. Place your left foot in the inside of your right elbow, your left knee and the inside of your left elbow. So you're cradling that left shin, opening up that left hip, stretching your left groin. Take another couple cycles of breath. And then release your left shin, head comes down, left leg extends out in front of you. And now you can push the blocks off to the side for a bit. Inhale to draw your knees into your chest and just start to rotate from right to left and left to right, massaging your lower back, releasing your spine. and come back to the center and then start to rock forward and back, building up a bit of momentum and rock yourself up into a seated position. And have your block handy. We're gonna use it in a moment. We're now gonna come into a seated Baddha Konasana. So have your legs in almost a diamond shape Press the soles of your feet together. Use your hands to open up the insides of your feet like you're opening up a book. Inhale to lengthen through your spine. Lift your head up. And as you exhale, start to lower your chest to your feet. You might come a third of the way down. You might come halfway down. You might be able to come even lower and place your forearms on the ground. And inhale. And exhale. Take another inhale. And exhale. Continue a slow and steady cycle of breath. And if your forearms are on the ground, press your palms into the ground, lift your forearms up, start to lift your torso up. And then take your block and come to sit up on it. It's gonna come into Upavishta Konasana. So extend your legs out into a V shape, place your fingertips on the ground and now inhale to lengthen up through your torso and start to walk your hands forward. So in yoga, in the practice of yoga, we talk a lot about trying to lower the volume, to reduce the chatter in our mind so that we can open it up to observations. And on the most basic level, you can 
make observations around the sensations in your body as we flow through the poses. But digging deeper, you can make observations around your mindset, your attitude, how it is that you face the heat and tension in these poses. Start to walk your hands back in. Lengthen up again through your spine and all four sides of your torso. And we're going to repeat this pose. We're going to come into Upavishta Konasana again. And you can either remain sitting up on the block as a way to recline in this pose, or you can remove the block. As you start to walk your fingertips forward and lower your torso down, start to make one of those observations. And part of what I'd like you to observe is your frame of mind as you approach this opportunity. And I want to suggest that there are four different ways to approach these observations. Number one can be from a place of authentic and optimistic curiosity. This burning deep fire to understand That's one option. Another way that we might approach these observations are from a place of cynicism and doubt or even arrogance. Like, what could possibly be the benefit of this practice, of this pose, of this moment? That's a second option. A third could be from a place of simplicity. If you're making an observation in this moment, just what's one simple thing that you might observe? And the fourth option could be from a place of just total unknowing to acknowledge that sometimes we don't even know how to make these observations. Start to walk your fingertips in, lift your torso up, come off of your block, come to sit in Sukhasana with your right shin in front of your left shin, hands on top of your knees, palms facing up, So as we flow throughout the practice, notice your mind frame, how you're approaching the observations that you have the opportunity to make. And what is your frame of mind? Is it that sincere curiosity? Is it from a place of doubt or cynicism? Is it from a place of simplicity? Here's just one thing I'm observing in this moment? Or are you totally, as one of my grandmothers would say, famished, totally bewildered? I don't even know how to begin making sense of this. And just observe that. And switch the crossing of your shin so that your left shin is in front. Let your eyes close. And one of the things that I think is valuable to accept is that no, none of us are bound by one of those frames of mind. 
as we move on in our lives, as we move on even from minute to minute in our practice, our frame of mind can shift from optimism and curiosity to cynicism, from cynicism to simplicity, from simplicity to bewilderment. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. Inhale. And exhale. Let your eyes open. So the, the uh, physical theme throughout our practice today is gonna be hip openings as we've already done um, previously in the first few poses, several of the poses to follow are going to accentuate the opening, the release of our hips. And so as I foreshadowed, one particular pose that is just outstanding for opening up the hips is pigeon pose. And we're gonna break pigeon up into two different versions pigeon one and pigeon two. We're gonna go a little bit of out of order, but there is an order to our practice today. There is a sequence. We're gonna start with pigeon two. We're gonna break those pigeons in half and do pigeon two right now. So to come into pigeon two, I'd like you to stack your right ankle on top of your left knee and your left knee stacks on top of your right ankle. And for some of us with particularly open hips, you'll be able to release your right knee onto your left ankle. For other people, this is how you might look. No problem. Take your block, take your source of reclining and place it underneath that right knee. Fingertips, you can actually have it right there. Fingertips out in front of you. Inhale to lengthen up through your torso. And then exhale, start to lower your torso down and walk your fingers forward. We'll be here for just another couple cycles of breath. And then walk your hands back in and second side. So this time stack your left ankle on top of your right knee. Your left knee comes on top of your right ankle. If this is how you look, wonderful. If that's how you look, take your block as a way to recline in this pose. Place it underneath that left knee, fingertips on the ground. Inhale to lift up through the crown of your head and exhale, start to walk yourself forward. And turn your attention to that opening, this time in your left hip. And if you're thinking opening, what opening? I don't feel a stretch, I don't feel an opening. You might need to walk your hands even further forward. Others might be screaming, okay, okay, I feel it. Well, you can back off, walk your hands in. This is a practice designed for a release, our march towards freedom not our march back into enslavement. One more cycle of breath. And then walk your hands back in. Lift your torso up. Remove your block, have both blocks towards the front of your mat so that they're there when we need them. 
And now come into, come onto your hands and knees into a tabletop position. And let's flow through a couple of cat cows. Inhale, reach your heart and chest up, arch your back, lift your tush up. Exhale, round your back, draw your belly into your chest. Inhale, arch your back into a cow position. Exhale, round your back into cat. Take that another couple of times, inhaling into cow and exhaling into cat. And any yogis who have recently gotten a vaccine shot, if you're feeling discomfort in your arm, you can always put padding underneath your hands to relieve some of the pressure. And now come back into a neutral position into your tabletop. And what I'd like you to do now is widen your knees out to opposite sides of the room. Let your knees spread and lower down onto your forearms. And if this is too much, I want to encourage you to recline in this pose. You can put your blocks or books underneath your forearms and lowering your torso down into Bekhasana, otherwise known as frog pose. So your knees are spread, opening up your hips. Your forearms are on, your, on the ground or on top of blocks. Your torso lowers towards the ground. Take one more cycle of breath. Hopefully this pose doesn't feel like a plague. That's not what I would want for your frog pose, for your vikasana. and then push yourself up, remove the blocks, bring your knees to be hip width apart, you're back in your tabletop position. And if you have discomfort in your arms, you can actually put your hands back on your blocks to come into a reclining version of downward facing dog, tuck your toes, Shift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And if this is too much on your wrists or too much in your arms, lower your knees down. Sit your hips back onto your heels and come into Balasana, into child's pose. If you're in your downward facing dog, Spin your inner thighs towards the back of the room. Let's take one more cycle of breath. And now lower your knees down onto the ground, bring your big toes to touch. And everyone we're gonna meet in our child's pose in Balasana, lowering your torso between your thighs, lowering your forehead onto the ground. and breathe. So we're about to move through a sequence, an order of Anjane Asana poses, low lunge poses. And we're gonna do four versions. And the low lunge is gonna be the stretch. It's gonna be where the heat is, a little bit of that kind of bitterness. But each time we do that, we're going to come in back into balasana, back into our child's pose. We're going to sandwich the balasana, that kind of release, that, that feeling of liberation and freedom with a little bit of the heat in the center through different variations, four variations of a low lunge. 
Lift your forehead up, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Shonasana, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, draw your right knee into your chest and step your right foot forward, lower your left knee onto the ground, untuck your left toes, press deeper into your right knee, and here we are, our first version of Anjane Asana of that low lunge, just the traditional basic form. And you can prop your hands up on your blocks like I am. Again, to distinguish this yoga practice as different from the other ones of the year, unless you're a habitual blocker, then maybe your difference is to do it without the blocks. We're going to take one more cycle of breath in this basic low lunge. And then tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, step your right leg back into plank pose. And you can either take the vinyasa or come directly back into downward facing dog. Now draw your left knee into your chest, step your left foot forward, lower your right knee onto the ground untuck your right toes, press deeper into your left knee, shine your chest and heart forward, and draw your left hip back and your right hip forward to help center yourself and to optimize that, that opening of your left hip. So again, this is just our first version of Anjane Asana, the basic low lunge. Take one more cycle of breath. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, step your left leg back, and now lower onto your knees, knees wider than hip width apart, untuck your toes, bring your big toes together, shift your hips back, and we're back in Balasana. That release, the freedom, the liberation in our Anjane Asana sandwich. And let's move into variation number two. So come up into your tabletop position, Tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Step your right foot forward. Lower your left knee onto the ground. And then untuck your left toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up. And exhale, lower your arms down. Place your left hand on your left side block or on the mat, and then raise your left shin into the air. Use your right hand to grab onto your left elbow. And here we are, our second of four variations, Anjane Asana with a quad stretch. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. Hug that left heel in closer to the left side of your tush. And then with your next exhale, release your left ankle, lower your left shin down, place your right hand on the block, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, step your right leg back, take the vinyasa if you'd like, or go back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, draw your left knee into your chest, step your left foot forward, lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes, inhale to lift your torso and arms up. Exhale, lower your arms down, press your right hand into your right block. Inhale to lift your Right shin up, take your left hand, grab onto your right ankle. And three cycles of breath. 
You're in your Anjane Asana with a quad stretch. Two more cycles of breath. Take your last cycle. Release your right ankle, lower your right shin down slowly towards the mat. Left hand comes onto your left block. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, step your left leg back, and then lower your knees down onto the mat. Untuck your toes, big toes touch, shift your hips back and you're back in Balasana. That was your second Anjane Asana sandwich. Take one cycle of breath to clear the plate, to kind of clear your palate, and then come back into your tabletop, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Version number three, inhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Step your right foot forward. Lower your left knee down. Untuck your left toes. Root your left hand down into your block or the mat. And then inhale, revolve over to the right. Open your right arm up towards the ceiling. Taking this open twist. One more cycle of breath. And keep your right knee in towards the midline. Fun fact, this is a great way to twist this open twist a little bit different than the traditional twist that we take. And then lower your right hand, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, step your right leg back, and you know the drill. You can take the vinyasa or come into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, draw your left knee in, step your left foot forward, lower your right knee down, Untuck your right toes, press your right hand into the block, and then inhale, lift your left arm up, twist open to the left side of the room. Don't let that left knee flop open to the left, draw it into the midline. Take one more cycle of breath. And then exhale, lower your left hand down, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, step your left leg back, you're in plank position, and lower your knees down, bring your big toes to touch, forehead down, you're back in Balasana, in child's pose. And pause for a moment, come back to those observations. What is your frame of mind? Curiosity, cynicism, simplicity, or total loss, bewilderment, observe it without judgment, pass through your tabletop position as you tuck your toes and shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Fourth variation, inhale, try your right knee into your chest. Step your right foot forward, lower your left knee down, untuck your left toes. So our fourth variation on Anjane Asana on this low lunge is to combine it with Hanumanasana. You might want to raise your blocks or books to a higher height and bring them back towards your hips a few inches. And now inhale to straighten your right leg, shift your hips back towards the back of the room, 
and you're using your blocks as a way to recline to make this more accessible in your Hanumanasana. And now we are going to dip into our knees, not just once, but twice. Today we are going to dip twice into our knees. Inhale, lower your right foot, bend your right knee, press that right knee forward, and then exhale to straighten your right leg. That's dip number one. Inhale, bend your right knee, flatten your right foot on the floor, press that right knee forward, and exhale, straighten that right leg. So there you have your Anjane Asana Hanumanasana with two dips. Take one more cycle of breath. And then again, flatten your right foot. Remove the blocks for a moment, or you can keep your hands on the blocks. Frame your front foot, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up and step your right leg back. Take the vinyasa, which is chaturanga to upward facing dog or shift directly into downward facing dog. Second side, inhale, left knee into your chest. Step your left foot forward, lower your right knee, untuck your right toes. Have your blocks handy, shift them back towards your hips and then inhale to straighten your left leg. The ball of your left foot lifts up into the air. This is your Hanumanasana pose. And pull your left hip back as your right hip comes forward a little bit. And now again, we are going to dip today, not once, not tw not, uh, but twice, excuse me. So inhale, dip into that left knee, bring your torso forward, press your left knee forward, and then exhale, straighten that left leg, lift the ball of your left foot up. Second dip, inhale, dip into that left knee, left knee forward, reach your heart and chest forward, and then exhale to straighten your left leg. Let's take two more cycles of breath. Closing out our Anjane Asana and Balasana sandwiches. And bend your left knee. You can either keep your hands on your blocks if you want the relief for your wrists and your arms, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, step your left leg back into plank position, and then lower your knees onto the ground. And we're gonna come into our balasana one more time, lowering your forehead onto the mat. Breathe. And then come back into a tabletop position. Last time, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Shanasana, downward facing dog. Turn your gaze between your palms. Start to walk your feet up, or you can hop forward into your Uttanasana, into your forward fold. Place the blocks off to the side, have a bend in your knees. Couple cycles of breath. Start to straighten your knees. You can have a micro bend in them. Float your hands up to your hips, elbows coming towards each other, and then slowly start to straighten up. Keep your gaze on the ground. 
Once you're standing up straight, lift your forehead, release your hands from your hips, and you come into your Tadasana, into your mountain pose. Great job. So that theme of four is gonna be important for our practice today. It's gonna to pop up one more time where we'll do four different variations of a similar pose, really honoring that number four in our practice today, standing in your Tadasana, and inhale, float your arms up, and exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. Uttita Hastasana, and exhale, arms come down in Tadasana. Do that half sun salutation two more times. Inhale, arms float up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet. Arms up, Uttita Hastasana. And exhale, Arms come down, Tadasana. One more time, inhale, Uttita Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, folding forward. Inhale into Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up. Exhale, back into Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up. Uttita Hastasana, exhale into Tadasana. Great job. Step your feet about three to four feet apart. Angle your toes in, your heels out, and place one of your blocks or book, books down in front of you. And we're gonna take Prasarita Padottanasana. Wide-legged forward fold. We are going to do not one, not two, not three, but four versions. Again, making this practice a little bit different than most. Another way to make this different, I want to add the layer of darkness. Close your eyes. We're going to do our wide-legged forward folds with our eyes closed. That said, if you are afflicted with vertigo, it might be a good idea to keep your eyes open. So do you take care of yourself? Otherwise, Prasarita Padottanasana version A. Inhale, lengthen up through your torso and exhale, start to hinge at your hips. Lower your torso down. Let the crown of your head drop down. And then release your hands from your hips. Place your fingertips onto that block. Start to walk your block in. You might be able to press your palms into the block. And breathe. And those of you who practice regularly, certainly if you practice regularly with me, you've done this pose numerous times. How does it change when we introduce the element of darkness? And observe, is darkness in this pose a plague? Is it a challenge? Or is darkness in this pose an opportunity to explore a new dimension of your Prasarita Padottanasana? One more cycle of breath. And then hands back on your hips. Inhale, lift your torso up. Keep your eyes closed. 
We're going to come into Prasarita Padottanasana C. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Start with a bend in your elbows. And then inhale, lift your torso and the crown of your head up. Start to draw your knuckles down towards the ground and towards the back of the room as you hinge forward. And as your torso lowers, your arms and knuckles float up towards the ceiling. Prasarita Padottanasana C. Take two more cycles of breath. Press your palms together. And so by doing this version of the pose, not only is this a great hip opener, we also turn it into a chest opener, a heart opener. Draw your shoulder blades together and spread your collarbones. Last cycle of breath. And then slowly start to lift your torso up. Once you're standing up straight, keep your eyes closed, release the interlace of your fingers, and then heel toe your feet in a few inches. Hands back on your hips. Inhale, lengthen up through your torso and exhale, Start to lower down. And now use your second and third finger to make a hook and grab on to your big toes. So second and third finger are between your big toe and your second toe. Your thumb is outside of your big toe. Lower your head. This is Prasarita Padottanasana D. And if you can, start to bend your elbows out to the sides of the room. Two more cycles of breath. Notice the distribution of weight in your feet. Try to distribute the weight of your body evenly into your feet. And with your next exhale, release the hook of your big toe, float your hands back up to your hips, and inhale to bring your torso up. That was the third version of Prasarita Padottanasana. And version four. Version four is going to be Prasarita Padottanasana with a twist. And observe what is the story that is being told through your practice today? What is the narrative that you are picking up on? Think of your yoga practice as the telling of a story. through the sequence, through the order of the poses. Inhale, lift up through the crown of your head. Exhale, folding forward. And your block or book should already be there waiting for you. Release your hands onto that block or book and press the palm of your right hand into the block and lift your left arm up Rotate your chest open to the left. Try to stack your left shoulder on top of your right shoulder. Three cycles of breath. This is your Prasarita Padottanasana with a twist. Two more cycles of breath. And with your next exhale, lower your left hand onto the block. Press the palm of your left hand onto the block or book. 
and inhale, lift your right arm up, stack your right shoulder on top of your left shoulder. Root down evenly through both feet. Take two more cycles of breath, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale, lower your right arm, right hand meets your left hand on that block. Keep your eyes closed. Hands come up onto your hips. And inhale, lift your torso up. And step your feet together. Keep your eyes closed for just another cycle of breath. Open up your eyes. So you're standing in Tadasana. Step your feet hip width apart. Move the block out of your way. Rikshasana, tree pose. Shift the weight of your body onto your left foot and draw your right knee into your chest. It's another hip opener. So take your right hand on your right knee, open your right knee out to the right side of the room. Grab onto the ankle of your right foot and press your right foot into your inner left thigh and press your inner left thigh back into your right foot and put your hands on your hips. Use your hands to center your hips towards the front of the room while simultaneously opening that right knee up further to the right. That's how you open up the hip. If you let your hips veer over to the right, there's not gonna be much of an opening. So it's the contracting actions of keeping your hips centered while opening up your right knee. If you're feeling stability here, great. If this is totally shaky and wobbly, why is this practice different? Because we're giving ourselves permission to relax. You can lower your heel to your shin. You can place your toes on the ground and press your heel directly above your left ankle. Whichever version of the pose you're in, let's come into that tree expression. Release your hands, lift your arms up. And if you wanna reintroduce that darkness, you can close your eyes. Ooh, I totally wobble, I feel it. That is quite a plague for me in my yoga practice. Open up your eyes if they're closed, lower your arms, draw your right knee into your chest and lower onto your right foot. I am totally still working on that ability to close my eyes in my tree pose. Second side, shift the weight of your body onto your right foot. Draw your left knee into your chest. Pause for a moment. Ground down into your right foot. That's your foundation. Open up your left knee to the left side of the room. Grab onto your left ankle and press the sole of your left foot into your right thigh. Right thigh presses back into your left foot, hands on your hips, center your hips. Remember the variations, variation number one, variation number two. So keep those hips centered as you open up your left knee towards the left side of the room. Release your hands, float your arms up. Let those branches grow. And last opportunity to experiment with this plague of darkness. Close your eyes. 
If you come out of the pose, come right back in, like falling off a bike. One more inhale and exhale, release. Good job. Next pose, Garudasana, an eagle pose. Let's start with just doing it in our arms, arms out into a T position. And swing your left arm underneath your right arm, cross at the elbows, and then interlace your arms together, pressing your palms together and lifting your elbows up to the height of your chin. Here we are in eagle arms. This might be plenty for some of you. If you want to add on the hip opening, shift the weight of your body into your right foot. Raise your left knee, cross your left knee above your right knee, and start to lower your hips down into the full expression of Garudasana Eagle Pose. Take one more cycle of breath. Inhale to stand up straight. Feet come back on the ground and arms come back into a T position. And second side, this time swing your right arm over to the left. Your left arm crosses on top of your right arm. Interlace your forearms, lift your elbows up to the height of your chin. And shift the weight of your body onto your left foot if you're also going to take the hip opener. Bring your right knee up, cross your right knee over your left knee, and start to sit back into your hips, bend your knees, float those elbows up to the height of your chin, two more cycles of breath, and then press on up, hip return to hip width apart, your feet return to hip width apart, extend your arms out into that T position, and lower your arms down. Awesome, awesome job. Come back to the top of your mat. Have your blocks handy. I want to suggest that you put them on the highest height, or if you're practicing with your hardcover books, as high as you can get them. Hands on your hips, step your left leg back. Angle your left foot in about 45 degrees towards the top of the mat. And we have arrived at Parsvottanasana, otherwise known as your pyramid pose. Pyramid pose. And those blocks on the, gro on the ground, I want you to imagine that they are the bricks of your pyramid. But here's what's amazing about these blocks. They are coated with a substance that brings relief. There's kind of a sweetness to this substance. Center your hips, lower your torso down, release your hands onto the blocks, and use them for a little bit of relief as you're building this pyramid almost like your blocks, which symbolize bricks, are coated with this mortar, this sweet mortar. To make this pyramid pose more accessible than it is most other days. One more cycle of breath. Inhale, lift your torso up and step your left foot forward. Second side, step your right leg back, 
Angle that right foot in about 45 degrees towards the top of the mat. Hands on your hips, center your hips towards the front of the room. You're coming into your pyramid pose, lowering your torso down, releasing your hands to your bricks. But in this case, those bricks are coated with mortar that provides relief, a sweet type of mortar. And pull your left hip back as your right hip comes forward to optimize the opening in your left hip. One more cycle of breath. Press down into your feet and rise up. Hands on your hips and step your back foot forward. Awesome job. And come down into a tabletop position. And so I said at the start of the practice that we were breaking our pigeon poses up into two pieces. The first piece we did at the beginning. And now, after searching and prepping and preparing, we have arrived at our peak pose. We have found pigeon number one. So from your tabletop position, step your right foot back. Step your left foot back to meet it in plank position. You can keep your knees down on the ground. That's totally fine. And now reach your right knee forward, angle your right shin 90 degrees towards the left side of the room. Your right knee is right in back of your right wrist. Lower your left knee to the ground, untuck your left toes. And now use your block as a way to recline in your pigeon. Put the block underneath your right hip. Start to walk your arms forward. What I like to do is lengthen my left arm all the way forward towards the front of the room and angle my right forearm 45, excuse me, 90 degrees towards the left side of the room and then lower your forehead onto your right forearm. So your right forearm is parallel with the top edge of your mat. And your pigeon pose, your pigeon one is kind of like the ultimate hip opener. Again, we found that second part of the pigeon. Take another couple cycles of breath. Lift your forehead up. Press your right palm into the ground, straighten your arms as you lift your torso up, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, remove the block from underneath your right hip, step back into plank position and second side. Draw your left knee into your chest, lower your left knee behind your left wrist, angle your left shin about 90 degrees towards the left side of the room, Untuck your right toes, shift your hips back, use a block underneath your left hip to recline in this pose, and then lift up through your torso, shine your heart forward, and walk your hands forward. Again, I like to lengthen my right arm towards the front of the room, and then angle my left forearm 90 degrees so that it's parallel to the top edge of the mat and I lower my forehead onto the top of my left forearm so that it's like a pillow. Several cycles of breath. You're doing great.
and then lift your forehead up. Start to walk your hands in. Lift your torso and heart up. Remove the block from underneath your left hip. And then just roll over onto the left side of your hip. Swing your legs forward. And let's take one forward fold, Paschimottanasana. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Hands onto your feet, your ankles, or your shins. Just three cycles of breath. And then as you take your next exhale, come up through your torso, have one block handy or book, bend your knees, plant your feet on the ground, extend your arms out in front of you and start to lower down onto your back. Walk your feet in, again, extend your arms alongside your torso so that the heels of your feet come towards your fingers. Your fingers can graze the heel of your feet. And then walk your feet out to either side of the mat and let your knees knock in towards each other. Come into this constructive rest pose. And as we start to cool down, I encourage you to take a moment for praise. Start to recognize your accomplishments, your abilities throughout this practice. Think back to just the seated positions that we were able to do together. And my gosh, those could have been enough. Then you widen your legs out and you folded your torso down towards the ground to whatever degree you were able to go. And that's an accomplishment. That could have been enough. Then we flow through those four different versions of Anjane Asana, the low lunge. Maybe you did one, maybe two, maybe three, maybe all four. And there again, that could have been enough. It's a reminder that on the days when the glass seems half full, to count our blessings. To recognize that each blessing we've been given could have been enough and how fortunate we are to often be able to discover one more. And bring your knees back up towards the ceiling. Take that block, place it underneath your hips on either the medium setting or the highest setting. for a restorative bridge pose and interlace your fingers together. So you're rolling your shoulders underneath your torso, pressing your knees forward. Marking this bridge as different than most other bridges we take by reclining in it. Take one more cycle of breath, then lift your hips up, remove the block, lower your hips down and extend your right leg forward, extend your left leg forward, let your ankles roll open, arms alongside your torso, palms facing up,
So you transition into a state of relaxation, of complete release. and identify the pleasure in your practice. The Hebrew term for this ability to find the pleasure, to be in a state of acceptance is ratsa. So using your Shavasana as an opportunity for ratsa. The final stop on the sequence. Start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Draw your knees into your chest. Roll on to the right side of your torso and pause for a moment. Press your hands into the ground Push yourself up into a seated position in Sukhasana. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. I say to you, you yogi warriors, mazel tov, on completing that sequence, on completing that order. Let your mind settle for just a final moment on this idea of a release, of liberation, of freedom. And as you head into Passover, or if Passover is not your holiday, it's no coincidence that it's also the start of spring. What is your release? What is an element of liberation? that you are walking towards. Lower your chin to your chest. Namaste, Shabbat Shalom, Chag Sameach, Chag HaAviv, Chag HaCherut, the holiday of freedom, of spring,